Hey guys, it's me Carly coming at you with another video and this is going to be a review video of a fan fiction I read and I'm dedicating this to my friend the Wicked Merman or Chris Jones, but he's known here as the Wicked Merman on YouTube and he wrote a fan fiction called Pause to Thumbs which is a mashup between Lady and the Tramp 2 Scamp's Adventure adventure and 101 Dalmatians and how they ugh. and it is about how the dogs turn into humans and I really did enjoy this fan fiction because I really Okay, I'll be honest, I started following him because of his Little Mermaid posts, but I was looking through his other posts a while back and he brought up some old childhood memories because he is, makes me feel very nostalgic. And this is a five day early birthday present for him because he was nice enough to make a month early birthday present for me of Tangi Turner and Paige Townsend Nodi kissing because I shipped them and it was really nice and anyways so pause the thumbs is about the three characters uh, patch Angel and Scamp, and they are they be ugh, they become friends, but the way they meet is in Patch's story. They uh, the Dalmatians and the what are the two owners' names? I forgot the two owners' names, but they come to America to escape Corella who is locked in an insane asylum because, I mean, her name is Cruel. Her name literally means Cruella or Cruel Devil. And her name is Cru Cruella Deville. Her, yeah, which is a more of a feminine version of Cruel Devil. And I would also just like to point out that Cruella Deville, a, there's a character's name who names... Corella Deville, and there's a character in this story named Angel, which is the name of Scamp's girlfriend. And so the Dalmatians come to America to escape her and to be safe and all of that. And what ends up happening, well, they're not safe for long, is that Patch ends up running away from home because no, I'm so all over the place, so sorry, because I tend to bounce around and I tend to forget my train of thought. So sorry if that, sorry that happens, but I'm doing my best here. Oh, okay, no, now I remember. Scamp uh, starts out by like exploring the swamp like normal and his siblings explore, but his siblings kind of ignore him. But the one sibling that doesn't ignore him is named Lucky and Lucky constantly is making fun of um, Patch because he's jealous of him and he doesn't want to admit that he's jealous. But the reason that Luck Lucky is jealous of Patch is because Patch is brave and treats him, or, er, and Patch defeated. Uh, Corella on her own and he's like one of the strongest and people respect him and people treat Patch kind of like a baby but the reason that is we find out later in the story is because Patch not Patch Lucky was born uh was dead for a few minutes while he was born so he kind of makes he envies Patch in that way for his bravery and Lucky or Patch ends up or ugh, Patch envies Lucky because he 
they think ugh. Patch thinks that his parents favor Lucky over him and Patch ends up con or not Patch. Lucky ends up convincing Patch that uh Lucky is the favorite and that Patch is nothing special and that they want it that his parents want to get rid of Patch, which is kind of a really mean thing to do to your brother. Anyways. So yeah, that's how Patch ends up running away. But Patch was exploring out in the woods like normal and came home late after dark because he tried to find his collar. And uh, Pongo, of course, busts him for lying about falling asleep because he was doing roll call and Lucky makes fun of him. So that's pretty much Patch's story of how he ran away. Uh, Scamp and Angel's story is that, oh, they're quite a hand, they're quite a pawful because they're dogs and not handful because they have paws, duh. But anyways... I'm like, why? They're such a pawful and Scamp is just so disobedient, something along those lines. And Angel doesn't really feel welcome because uh, Scamp's sisters are little shits who make fun of him and his and Angel. Because one, they're jealous of Scamp because Scamp isn't afraid to be himself. And uh, two... They're jealous of angels because she's brave and she's the prettiest of them all. Even more beautiful than a Lady. And they say that all they have is their looks. So anyways, the three of them, Patch, Angel, and Scamp all bond over the fact that they feel unwanted and they like to explore. And it's like, okay, no, when everyone goes to sleep, we're gonna go explore. So that's what they do. And they ended up at this house where this wizard named Chris lives. Yes, Chris is the wizard in the story. Yeah, he put himself in the story. I know. <laughs> it's funny, but it's okay. Because I liked his character and his character development a lot. Quick note on his backstory. His backstory is that in the story only because it only applies to the story he ran away when he was 10 years old from his parents because his dad was kind of hard on him and he was bullied in school by other wizards and uh couldn't take it anymore so he ended up running away and his parents tried to he said that his parents didn't try to find him but spoiler alert spoiler alert he ended up they did try and find him, but he kept using magic to hide himself and then waited until he got old enough to where his parents couldn't recognize him. So he left his parents in agony for like 13 years, which is not really nice, Wizard Chris. But don't worry, there's a happy ending to the story because it's a Disney story and it's got to have a happy ending. But not before a few death deaths. So anyways, Angel, Patch, and uh, Scamp end up at his house. And they end up knocking, uh, like, these things over. Like, these potion things over in his house. And, um... They end up drinking it, because you should not drink random things. Because they're thirsty, and they think it's milk. But then they end up falling asleep. And then soon they end up getting turned into humans. And Wizard Chris wakes up to a surprise of three naked children in his bedroom. Not bedroom. Oh. No. Okay, he's he's not a pedophile. That, that sounded so fucking wrong. In his living room. Not his bedroom, because that, that sounds really, really wrong. But you know what I meant. Living room. And he was not expecting that because he doesn't normally get company and he hides his house with magic. So anyways, he he's like, what the hell? And he ends up giving them clothing the color of their collar. And which is nice because you can't have like three naked children running around. I mean, come on. That's just common sense. <laughs> 
so anyways uh they sit down they tell him what happened and uh He's basically a recluse until the three puppies slash children come into his life. Wizard Chris is basically a recluse. And he will only do socializing if he absolutely has to, but otherwise avoids people because he's not very social. So they are humans for like months, like three months and don't go home and they are scared of going home because they're they're feeling very unwanted and it's very much like the time Ariel got turned into a human but by per choice and didn't really want to go home to her father because her father was a dink and destroyed her treasures and that's how they feel about their parents except no treasures were destroyed in the making so some of the best parts of the story for me were Wizard Chris's backstory and the resolution to his story. And um, I just like how over time he like grows a heart. Well, okay, not, I mean, he has a heart, duh, but he opens himself back up to being loved and cared about and he opens himself to caring about these people. So, for example, there is a chapter where uh, Patch, Scamp, and Angel get sick. Uh, Pat or Scamp gets the measles. Angel has your run-of-the-mill flu sla slash cold. And um, Patch, of course, ends up getting chicken pox because one, chicken pox are red, and he is a Dalmatian, so why not have him be covered in chicken pox slash spots? And I think the funniest part in the story was like, they're called chicken pox. Most children get them. And he's like, I got something from a chicken. So I thought that was pretty funny. Um, Angel Scamp is totally in love with Angel and them professing their love to each other was just so beautiful. Like I just loved it so much. But yeah. Um, what else? Okay, so Corella in the story is in an insane asylum, because, as I said before, and she ends up getting out by knocking out a guard and getting a news with a newspaper she somehow managed to get. And so she has to walk out of there in disguise because. If you see a lady with black and white hair walking out, you know it's Corella. So she ends up escaping, ends up at Wizard Chris's house and steals a magic book. And she gives the ability to other animals to talk. And uh, so the other... Uh, people who end up human in the story are Buster, which is um, Scamp's or Tramp's nemesis. And this is all because Scamp lied or no, Tramp lied and stole Buster's woman. Pretty much. Yeah, it's pretty much over a girl. So Tramp is a tramp for a reason. He's called Tramp for a reason. And then uh, the Siamese cats end up getting turned into human, which is like Aunt Sarah's cats. They're super annoying. What else is... What else happens? And then... Um, Pat, or... Er, Reggie, even the which is a really scary dog that even Buster is afraid of, ends up getting turned into a bear to try and chase. Because Buster wants revenge on Tramp slash Scamp for not going with him. And Corella still wants revenge 
for Patch beating her and still wants to turn the Dalmatians into a coat. Yeah, she's psycho. But her name literally means cruel devil, which is funny because her name means cruel devil and there is a character in the story named Angel. So I just like how their nemesis and their names literally mean the opposite. So I thought that was pretty cool. So what ends up happening in one of the chapters is that Scamp and Patch end up getting chased by this bear who turns out to be Reggie and kidnap. Well, they're almost kidnapped until Patch knocks out Buster because yeah and they're talking and they kind of develop this dynamic like well they're friends and they have like a brotherly dynamic on how P Scamp feels jealous of his siblings because they're proper and perfect and Scamp is like, oh, well, that was lucky we escaped. And then Patch rolls his eyes every time uh, Scamp said the word lucky. But then Lucky, or Patch is like, hey, I have this brother named Lucky. He made fun of me. And at first, Scamp doesn't know what's wrong because I was like, what? I just said we were lucky or something along those lines. It's been a while since I've read this fanfic. But it's like... Why did you just roll your eyes at me? And then later on, he picks up on the fact that it's like, oh, lucky. So, yeah. Um, so, they end up moving, the Dalmatians end up moving to this plantation next to the Darlings, and they want to um, get rid of of Corella, which doesn't end up happening officially. But, sorry, I'm kind of all over the place and I've like recorded this video like three times, so sorry if I'm stuttering, I don't mean to be, but just bear with me. What was I saying? Now oh, I lost my damn train of thought again. Oh yeah. So Corella ends up breaking into Wizard Chris's house after escaping from the insane asylum and he doesn't know what happens. And she ends up being more powerful than him all because she has this book of his, which he doesn't practice dark magic because that's evil. Doi. And she's evil. Doi. Because of her name being Corella DeVille. And she... They end up in a fight, of course, because it's like, it's got to be heroes versus villains. And Chris ends up, like, wizard Chris ends up going to uh, the house and being like, hey, I have your children, they're humans, and I'm going to give you the, the ability to talk. And first the dad is like, yeah, you're full of crap, dude. Like, <laughs> you're not a magician. And he's like, well... How else do you think I'm keeping the door open by magic? That's just a trick. Okay, I'll call my magic carpet. Oh, it's just one of those trick carpets. They, it's a robot. I don't know why I just went into that accent. And then he's like, okay, you really don't believe me? How about I give the animals abilities to talk? Which then he's like, oh, you really are magic. I can understand my animals now. So... He's like, look, I have your children. We need to get them back. I'm going to yell at them when they come back, pretty much, is what they said. And then he's like, hey, you idiots. This is why we're in this situation in the first place. So, anyways, uh, Corella ends up coming to the plantation because she, because she puts a spell on Patch, who um, tells her, because he doesn't have a choice, because he's like an 11-year-old little boy. And, yeah. Why do I keep saying Anya? And so she like ends up fighting, tries to kill them. Uh, but she doesn't die. Well, she does die because she creates this big thing of lava and Buster ends up dying too. And the Siamese cats end up going back to being angels, not angels. Um, 
Yeah, I'm giving spoilers. Sorry if I'm giving spoilers, but it's on DeviantArt, and if you want to go read it, go ahead, because it's really good. But anyways, so long story short, Angel, Scamp, and Patch all end up making up with their families and sibling. Er, yeah, most of their, most of the family, and they end up making, er, uh, the sisters and Patch's sisters, Patch, Scamp's sisters, Jesus, end up make they, uh, they end up making up, okay. And end up apologizing, even though it took a, uh, it took Patch, Scamp, to uh, shove his sisters to get the message, and then they end up getting grounded for a month, and uh, Patch ends up punching punching Lucky in the face, because yeah, and then Patch and. Tramp and Pat, or P Tramp and Buster, God, I can't keep my words together right now, end up getting into a uh, fist fight because Chris, Wizard Chris, turns them all into humans. And eventually they end up winning and they end up escaping and they all end up getting kidnapped. Which, of course, uh, Scamp and Patch have to have a little bit of help. But because Angel grew up a street dog, she learned how to get out of every single trap there was, so it was easy for her to escape. And then she doesn't want to hear Patch say, I love you, until it's over and they know they're like going to live a long time. Scamp say, I love you. Did I say Patch again? Because I keep mumbling and... Not mumbling. Stuttering over my words. Like, I really should write out a script for my post. So that ended up good, and then my favorite was when uh, Wizard Chris ended up turning him back into dogs, and he was really sad, and I was really sad because it was like, he really grew to love these children, and he even taught them that as people, you cannot chase squirrels up trees, because that's not good human manners. And he took care of them like a big brother. And it was just the sweetest thing. So because he saw the guy or the three children making up with their families, he goes back on his magic carpet, which by the way, Corella destroys. But because Corella ends up falling in a pit of lava, literally, and Buster ends up falling in a pit of lava and Scamp tries to save him, but can't. Uh, the lava goes back to normal and everything bad that Corilla has done comes undone because she's not strong enough for that. And they end up defeating her by saying the spell and they have to be elements of the earth. Which I'm not trying not to spoil, but I'm kind of gonna spoil the ending sorry if you don't want me to but I'm gonna do it anyway Chris ends up going back to his family and they don't recognize him because he's an adult and he's like uh -huh. yeah it's me your son Chris that ran away because and they knew he was telling the truth because of the scar on his eyebrow and he like stays there for a few weeks and he makes up with his parents and it's just so damn beautiful. It was like, oh, God, finally. Kind of like how the weird murdering shovel guy from Home Alone, he's not actually a murderer, ends up making amends with his son and daughter, or granddaughter or whatever. Uh, or, no, it was his daughter. Because they were estranged, and Chris was a, or Wizard Chris was estranged from his family, and I thought, I'm like, why can't families just be healthy and nice and, like, make amends? And families aren't perfect, but he still knew his mom loved him. And I just love this story a lot. I'm going to leave a... I'm going to go to DeviantArt, and when this video is over, I'm going to... Or, ugh, not video. I'm going to put a link in the description box below, and... 
just go check out his content because it's amazing and I think it's worth promoting and uh I don't know if you people some of you well, some of you people might follow him but I'm gonna say that he did bring out a lot of uh nostalgic feelings and uh I'm glad he loves sequel characters so yeah okay so but I'm not going to spoil the very, very ending. But Chris does eventually. Wizard Chris ends up making up with his family. And, uh, yeah. And then the very end. No, I'm not going to do that. But anyways, that's my review on this fan fiction. It was a pretty good fan fiction. Um, he also plans to write a book not Disney related. It's an original book about this kid named Noah. No, I'm not giving any spoilers because it's on DeviantArt and he has made pictures. Noah, which has kind of look like, kind of looks like him as a kid who is an orphan and he's abused and he runs away when he's like eight and he plans on never going back to an orphanage and then he meets this guy named Luke well not guy this other boy named Luke who is the son of a pat preacher and he actually looks like a Simon Canvinen from the animation I saw because he has like animated pics of them like and uh, this girl named Gabrielle who's an African-American girl who pretty much lives in an all-white community. So if you're interested in hearing about that, that's also on DeviantArt. And I think he also plans to write a, a fan fiction for Little Mermaid. This is all online, so I don't think I'm giving anything away because this is like public information because he posted it on a public forum. So I'm gonna leave his DeviantArt account below uh, his Pasta Thumbs fan fiction's on there, especially the revamped version of it. He told me not to read the original version that he put on um, Fan Pop because he said he wrote it when he was like 16, so. And he just has improved as a writer because improvement comes with age. So anyways, happy early birthday, Chris slash the wicked merman and uh i hope you like this birthday present anyways thank you for watching and if you guys have any suggestions on what i should do next uh please leave a comment down below if you like this video like share and subscribe and uh have a good one